Single player games. Since I can remember, this is what made gaming what it is today, especially linear games. Even though companies will want you to believe that life service is the way forward, you can never replace that single player game, that narrative story linear game that you could just play in over and over again. So if you've just bought a PS5 or you're thinking, what games am I not gonna get bumped off with with battle passes and this other crap? Oh, that's right. Then you need to know about these top 15 linear games that you need to play on your PS5. And honestly, I don't even want to talk about the times I bought those Ubisoft games. Oh my god. Okay, cannot wait to play these games. <laughs> what the? What the hell? Where the hell are the discs? Oh, that's it. I'm giving them. Hello Ubisoft Connect, how can I help? Yeah, well basically... Do you have a problem signing into your Ubisoft Connect account? No, 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 I just want to... Do you have a problem purchasing any online currency? We don't want that. No, that, that's not the problem. Helix credit? No, I've bought two games off you and there's no damn discs in the case. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just download them? <laughs> I collect physical, I like physical, I want to own the game. Like you own our games. <laughs> What was that? Nothing, nothing. Let's just have a look at your account. Alright, go on, I want this sorted. So you only bought the physical deluxe vibrating ultimate early accessible gold standard non-digital box physical plane edition. <laughs> yeah. What does that even mean? Well, we're going to put you on hold. No, 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 don't put me on. Hello, you have been placed on hold. Hey everyone, this mother thinks if he gets the box, it comes with the disc, with the game! <laughs> Imbeciles! <laughs> In number 14, we have a game that supposedly was a flop according to Square Enix. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. A lot of people love this game and it is a story-driven single-player game, unlike the Avengers. This is an original story and the character's banner is so similar to the movies, but they have done such a great job making them completely different. We'll be in and out with no one the wiser. Drax, what part of quiet don't you understand? Dead is quiet, Peter Quill. No killing! You follow the story, you will go to different planets which look incredible, and you play as one character, you play as Star-Lord. And by controlling Star-Lord, you can command your other teammates to help you out. And as you progress, you'll be able to upgrade all of the Guardian's abilities. There are a lot of cutscenes in this game, a lot of cutscenes. And this is one of the first games I played when I started my YouTube career. And I just don't think I gave it a chance, really, because I was trying to get through a lot of games. So this is one for my backlog log back log backlog you get to create relationships with your guardians and it can be positive or negative by choosing different dialogue options which will affect each guardian depending on the situation and what option you pick some of them will get annoyed if you favor someone else over the other make it we get the shield back up if only we could shield our thoughts Number 13, we have Hi-Fi Rush, an Xbox exclusive. Damn, we're living in a different dimension. And all I hear is positivity about this game. And the more I see about it, I need to play this. You play as Chai, a guy who wants to be a rock star, and he signs up to some project that replaces limbs. And something goes wrong, and his music player is fused to his body. He's labeled as a defect, so he has to start fighting these robots. But where this game shines is that you have this guitar, and everything in this world moves to the beat. You don't have to always fight along with the beat but you will get more bonuses and you can upgrade these skills for better attacks and better damage. The colours and the environments look insane, so beautiful and as you go along in the game you will gain allies that will help you out with these fights and the enemies get harder with quite a lot of variety and the boss fights look quite unique.
It's a shame there's no physical release. In number 12, we have a couple of games that in recent years are one of my favorite games and they rely heavily on telling a story, which could be a little bit confusing at times. The first game is where you are introduced to Alan Wake, who is a famous writer. And when he goes to this mysterious town, Bright Falls, because his wife hopes this trip will get him to write his best work again, his wife goes missing and is taken by this dark presence. It just gets from bad to worse where he starts finding manuscripts that he supposedly wrote and the place that he was staying at with his wife doesn't exist. It hasn't existed in years. Throughout the game you will progress the story and it kept me glued the whole way through. There is hardly any freedom in the game but to be honest the story was that good. I just wanted to know what the hell was going on. Now with Alan Wake 2 I love this game even more and even though you do have a little bit more freedom it's still a linear experience and especially if you don't do any of the small side activity as well. I loved my playthrough of this and this was probably the first or second second game that I platinum. Oh, jeez! Oh my gosh, man! When I did my review, I didn't actually know that Saga Anderson was actually race swapped because she was introduced as an Easter egg featured in Remedy 2016 Quantum Break. But of course, Sweet Baby needed to get involved and <laughs> I can't actually believe companies pay them to actually ruin their game. And you know what they did? Diversity! We still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero, males. We cater them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. What the f are you talking about? Like despite that, I really enjoyed the game and supposedly didn't even sell well, which is totally understandable. There's no physical release. People will not buy it. I wouldn't have bought it if I wasn't doing YouTube. It's not for everyone. People say it's a walking simulator. Number 11, we have Robocop, a double A game that we need more of, to be honest. And as of this video, I continue in my playthrough with it. We play this on stream and this game just surprised me. The gunplay is so satisfying. <laughs> Set in old Detroit, you must clear the city of criminals. You can investigate side missions if you want to, as well as the main missions. Dialogue choices, giving out tickets to the public. Those small little side missions, uh, they're a little bit more mundane, but it's totally optional. And I think this is worth a playthrough. More so if you enjoy Robocop. And for some reason, this reminded me of Counter-Strike. In number 10, we have a game that has been screaming for a remake for such a long time, and that is Bloodborne. Do not be put off this game, even if it is 30 FPS. And no, I haven't completed completed it because I will actually do that after Elden Ring. The combat and the ability to parry and learning how the game works is so good. Now if you just follow the story it can be very linear but there are a ton of optional areas and bosses that you can do in any order. You play as a hunter in this amazing gothic world which has affected the residents which has transformed them into these horrific beasts. And at first when playing this game you might feel a certain way. I'm trying to dodge! The Plague Tale games are one of the most underrated games. If you've never played these, I, I don't know what you're doing. Get off the video, well watch the rest of the video and start playing them. Not only is the story that gripping, it's sad, there is so much emotion. You play as a missia and your family get murdered by the French Inquisition and your goals is to protect your brother Hugo from all of these soldiers but also these hordes of rats that are infecting people with the Black Plague. The story is so similar to like The Last of Us, that's the emotions it brought out in me. And with the sequel Requiem, it is even better. Amicia gets more ability. She's improved so much with the combat. It's in 60 FPS, which I didn't experience at launch because, you know, companies like to <laughs> upgrade it later. I forgive you. It's still a good game. It was still a good game in 30 FPS, but, you know, I freaking missed it. And in the sequel, you'll be able to use special abilities that Hugo has, which you'll understand what's going on. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it just all starts kind of going all just... You know what I mean? There are semi open world areas in the sequel and they just look so beautiful, but you can just go through and do the story. There is a little bit of exploration, but generally it is one of the best linear story games I've played. Believe you and me, you may or may not be crying by the end of the game unless you're a 32 year old guy like myself who doesn't, you know, who doesn't do that sort of stuff. You know, like games affect him. <laughs> I thought you were going out. 
In number eight, my favorite game of 2023, Final Fantasy 16. This is a very linear game, especially if you don't do the side quests, which are optional. This story of this game is unbelievable. It's a lot better than I ever thought it would be. The first Final Fantasy game that I actually played. As I said, there can be a lot to do in the game, even though the side quests can be a little bit useless at times. One of the best story games I have played in recent years. Clive, who is a guardian of your brother Josh, who is an icon of fire. This is set in the world of Valisthea and each of the six nation holds power through these magical crystals and dominance. Humans who are the host of each nation's icons. That made they're crazy. Each of the different environments are just jaw dropping and some people may not be keen on the combat but I absolutely loved it. The payoff for this game was so worth it and you will save a lot of time if you just don't do the side missions. Just be prepared to be watching a lot of cutscenes. <laughs> Priests are allowed to perform the rites of priming and I see many. And with Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's the same sort of thing. It's a very linear game. And if you don't do the side missions, you could get through the game a lot quicker. And that is, I don't know what one's my favorite. And I just realized I haven't got the game on box. And I've just heard that it's going to come off the PS Plus subscription service, even though I'm trying to platinum it. So I'm going to have to buy it as box. But don't be put off by the combat. The story is insane. The combat is even better than Final Fantasy XVI. I didn't think I would say that. I just, I just didn't think I would like it. But the use of the command system is just just brilliant and I cannot wait to play Rebirth eventually. Now number seven, the Callisto Protocol. I don't think a lot of people played this game. I really enjoyed it. Yes, it was flipping frustrating at times with some of the damn enemies and some of the features that were really annoying at like how slow it took him to heal. They've changed a lot of those criticisms that I was complaining about. You crash land on the Jovian moon and are captured only to be thrown into a prison and you meet an ally named Elias and work together to try and escape. You will get quite a lot of variety of weapons. You can dodge attacks and the way it works is that you have to flick the one of the analog sticks when you're about to get hit it's not just the use of a button a lot of people didn't like it but i actually enjoyed it It was a little bit different confusing at first but it was a nice touch when there was too many damn enemies on the screen it was this elevator scene it took me about 15 times to beat these enemies realizing I, I should use my ability to grab them and teleport them off the elevator this honestly was very frustrating but honestly it's worth a play and i heard that was a flop as well in terms of sales i don't get what these companies think they're gonna do what, 10 million copies in a day? People can't afford these new games at like 60, 70 pounds. You're better off playing older games. And number six, we have a game that I need to play and I have never played it. A lot of you may be put off by playing this game and that's God of War 3. But more so, you would play this game for the story. It follows on from God of War 2, where you're continuing your revenge for the gods of Olympus. I do want to see what Kratos was like before 2018. People will just rave about the story. Yeah, the combat might not be as enticing. He's a completely different person in this game and you will fight up against these amazing Greek gods, Hades, Poseidon, Hercules, Hermes, Zeus, and much more. 2018's God of War was an incredible game and I played this near the end of the PS4 cycle. Yeah, it took me a long time to play this game. And I have to say with God of War 2018, I just think it's a near perfect game. This is like an interactive movie. And with God of War Ragnarok, yes, at times this feels more like a semi open world area because there's quite a few side quests to do. But if you don't do the side quests, then this game is pretty linear. Oh, I don't have to recommend this enough. I'll be surprised if you haven't played these damn games. In number five, we have Helldivers 2. And a lot of you are say, whoa, this is not a linear story driven game. No, but it's a very linear game and it's an amazing game. Trust me, because it's so simple even though it's kind of online and everyone's doing it collectively as a hell diver you could pick up the game whenever you want and just dive in you could take two weeks off and dive right back in and just enjoy this game it's that good and your goal is simple with defend super earth and travel to these other damn planets against the terminides and the automatons not sure what i uh, i think i said that right and my gosh these can be so hard man you need a good team even if it's just one other person there are so many constant updates with the game but it doesn't make you feel like you're missing out for instance you can get the democratic detonation war bond which includes new weapons capes and helmets but the game is so simple it's just you have a certain task you land on this planet you may have a few tasks and optional side options for more experience and more bonuses but it's just to get in get out and just you know just do your bit i just imagine what they're doing on super earth now
The number four Resident Evil 2 remake is not as linear as the other ones. It's more like a puzzle. You can get through the campaign in like eight to ten hours. Although it's less linear than probably the other games, as there is a free roaming sections where you have a few objectives to do and choose the order for you to do these missions in. I need to start this game again because Mr. X was running after me and I ran out of bullets and I just got tired of trying to do it. I just thought I'll need to start this game again. But Resident Evil 4 is much more of a linear game and wow, this is one of my favourite. Probably my favourite favorite Resident Evil game. There's a few small side missions like little collectibles that you can do for some mini rewards but you'll be following the story just collecting items and traveling to the next objective once you've acquired certain items or just progress the story. And for anyone who loves third person games, horror games, some of you might be too scared because this is one of them and this will put you on edge. For Resident Evil 7 was again another game and I really enjoyed playing this in first person. I didn't mind it at all, it's actually more scary. In this story you'll be following Ethan Wynn winters as he looks for his wife. There are puzzles and the game does offer some backtracking if you want for optional areas for additional items and weapons. And with Resident Evil 8 it feels like a semi open world but it's very very linear. I played this game about four times. It was that good. I just feel like when you get through those jump scares I could then appreciate the game even more because you're just trying to get through it as quickly as possible so I had to play a second, third and fourth time. In number three being a PlayStation gamer since back in the day especially like the PS3 Uncharted. probably one of the best linear games you can play with just emphasis on story. This is when Naughty Dog used to be good and if you've never played any of these games I still think you need to go back to the first game with Uncharted 1. You need to go back to that Drake's Fortune. I don't know how it holds up today but I still think these are such worth a play to understand the story, the characters, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3 and then Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. You wouldn't appreciate Drake and you wouldn't just you just you need to play all of them there you can get them cheap and there is just this will keep you occupied for like the next five six months depending on how much you play and it's taking Naughty Dog so long to bring out a new game because they've just been focusing on remasters he was to make Uncharted now who god knows what Drake would look like and in number two why not go back to the original PlayStation and replay Tomb Raider with that remaster I don't think there's going to be a physical release but when I've got some free time I want to go back maybe we're going to play this on the retro stream and this game has got such good feedback from the community but from Crystal Dynamics, <laughs> I don't even know why they released it. They, they don't even like it. They had to do that warning screen at the start. Who is running this? This is disgraceful. We're going to apologize for this, but we need to make some money. These people are so weird that the cats at home probably want to get away from them. Hi, my name is Erin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a... Anyway, these remastered games just transform the game for all the right reasons. The lighting, the textures, and I'm just gutted they haven't got a physical release. I've actually never played the originals just because I was really young. I used to just watch my uncle playing it on his PS1 and I was just like, whoa these pixels. Now in number one, this is probably my favorite game of all time. The Last of Us Part One is probably the best storyline. To think this came out all the way in 2013 and I platinumed it on PS5. What I would give to play this game for the first time again. Play, I've put in like 300 hours, including the PS4 version. This is why I prefer linear games. You can just play them over and over if the story is that good. I like to come back to this game every so often. One of the best linear games you will play. The journey of Joel and Ellie was just so unique and I just don't think they could ever top this game. As you know this has divided the fans with the sequel but that story in the first one is the best linear game you will play. I haven't even mentioned The Walking Dead because I've just nearly finished it. This should be on this list. You could, well I'm putting it on now. The Walking Dead Telltale series. The story, the dialogue options, the way the game works. It is an amazing linear game. This is crazy. I've enjoyed it that much. It's on this list. I've put it on the list it's that good what games have i missed out what are your favorite linear games i want to know what you think so drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video i played over 40 hours of dragon's dogma 2 shout out to austin james nice video i love dragon's dogma 2 vocation switching is highly encouraged to be honest and i recommend you do this throughout your playthrough to get access to bonuses it just makes the game in this fun open world with all the tools needed to become a powerhouse the grind is definitely needed before getting there though love the content 
Thanks for the comment, Austin. And yes, I've reloaded now an old save before I did the end game because I couldn't do a new game plus. And I've just switched to the Mystic Spear Hand one, if I've got that right. Probably wish that I did switch my vocation a bit earlier, but now it just feels like a totally different game. So I'm going to spend quite a few hours on that before I change my class maybe to an archer or a magic archer. I can't remember what they are. What a game Dragon's Dogma 2 is. Yeah, there's still quite a decent amount of games to get through. Anyways, time to chill out before I start some gaming and...